bad news for aew plus so much more we're gonna talk about it all right here on the ango show all right guys just a quick reminder we go live monday through friday at 12 p.m eastern live on this channel we're going to talk about some of the latest in wrestling storylines and of course some other topics that you guys want to discuss we'll be engaging with the live chat every single day so make sure you guys join me today at 12 p.m eastern i want to kick things off with some very interesting news surrounding hulk hogan this guy this guy is always lying. I don't know why Hulk Hogan lies so much, but on an impulsive, he was talking about how he had creative control in WCW and he didn't use it. Now, I don't know what it is about Hulk Hogan and his lies, but there are a lot of people who have been on the record uh, about his creative control and how he's utilized it. And, and, you know, I just find it so funny that Hulk Hogan tries to rewrite history. Now, listen, you can respect Hulk Hogan as a in-ring performer. Obviously, Hulk Hogan was larger than life at one point. Uh, but I never really cared for Hulk Hogan. And I think when Hulk Hogan does these interviews or these podcasts or whenever he's really talking publicly, I just it goes in one out the one ear and out the other to be honest and uh i, I find this such uh, i find this to be such a funny story because well truth be told hulk hogan always had creative control and hulk hogan always used creative control and i don't know to sit there and act like that wasn't the case it is very weird and very strange and i just want to throw that out there i thought that was absolutely crazy all right let's talk a little bit about don Callis. uh according to scott demore Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling will be bringing in Don Callis as the commentator that will be seated right next to Mauro Ranallo. And I thought this is pretty interesting news. Obviously, Scott Demore is doing some big things. And when it comes to Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling, I'm actually really intrigued to see what goes on. Because, quite frankly, it's, it's new. It's different. It doesn't look like Scott Demore is signing people exclusively to the promotion. It seems like he is taking the approach that GCW has, which I think could be pretty unique and pretty, pretty positive. Uh, but I think the idea of having Don Callis and Mauro Ranallo on commentary could be pretty cool. Obviously, we're going to see what their chemistry is like. Uh, but Don Callis, Scott Demore, they worked together in the early days of Anthem buying TNA. And when Impact Wrestling got bought out by Anthem, Don Callis and Scott Demore were credited for making significant change to the company. Eventually, Don Callis left Impact, and he went to AEW. And a lot of people thought that there may have been some behind-the-scenes issues between Don Callis and Scott Demore. Uh, but I'm going to assume with Scott Demore bringing in Don Callis, that isn't true. And uh, look... I think Don Callis is actually pretty good at commentary. So him and Mauro Ranallo should be a good commentary team. I think it adds some legitimacy to the product. And if you look at the names that are being brought in and you look at AEW having some of their talent involved here, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for pro wrestling. It's another option. Matchups that you might not get anywhere else, you will now be able to see. And I think anytime you have that as an option in today's wrestling climate, it's just a good thing overall for the fans' experience. Now, I don't know if Scott Demore is going to be doing storylines or anything like that because it looks like he's doing more of the live event style. Um, obviously, if you're there in attendance or if you're watching on Triller TV, there could be some significance to it, but in terms of like weekly television, I'm going to assume that is not the goal for Scott Demore. Obviously, that can change, and that is completely fine if it does. Um, but I am really curious to see how fans will respond to this. I know for myself personally, I'm excited to see it, and I know that the shows will be in Canada, which is not a far drive from here. So, I mean, like that could be a possibility. Uh, I think I'm really intrigued to see how the commentary team si sounds, and I'm very curious to see how Scott Demore decides to present the product. Is it going to look like a typical indie show, or will we see Titan Trons? Will we see an actual stage? These are things that I'm curious about, and I do look forward to seeing how it all transpires. Obviously, we will know within time. All right, let's talk about Paul White. Uh, man, this is good, maybe, possibly. I'm not sure. I mean, look, here's the thing. Paul White... He is talking about an in-ring return, and I think this is super intriguing for a lot of reasons. I was always a big fan of the big show. He comes to AEW. 
doesn't really do much on AEW television, uh, but he was appearing on Down Under the Ring, and he is talking about getting back in the ring. He says, God, I hope so, because Tony Khan paid me a shit ton of money to get in the ring, and so far I haven't done shit. So that's where I'm actually really intrigued, because obviously Big Show has been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Um, I was under the impression he was more so a higher for behind the scenes he's saying that he's getting paid a shit ton of money to be in the ring and uh i don't know like i'm very intrigued by this look big show paul white however you know him as he's a veteran having veteran presence is huge i don't need paul white to get in the ring and and you know win a world championship or anything like that but if he's going to wrestle one i want it to make sense from a storyline perspective and two I don't want Paul White getting some sort of massive push when there are so many other guys on the roster that are worthy of a push that have not been pushed. I also want to point out for Paul White that, uh, you know, it's not like this guy is getting any younger. So there's got to be a way for them to book him. I don't know if they can book him like they did with Sting, but maybe pairing him with somebody else and, and just kind of being like on screen, kind of like a bodyguard type of, you know, being the muscle for an up and comer could be really cool. Uh, Sting was side by side with Darby and that worked out really good for, for both. Um, so if Paul White is going to return, I would like to see them take that sort of approach. I don't know exactly what to expect here, but it is something worth discussing. Paul White getting in the ring soon. We'll see how it all goes down. And that brings us to our final topic. Unfortunately, AEW Collision is suffering. And this is not good news for AEW, to be honest. I mean, look, we could sit here and talk ratings all day. We could talk about the numbers. We could talk about all the specifics. Uh, but according to WrestleNomics, the August 31st edition of AEW Collision garnered an overnight average viewership of 289,000 viewers. Uh, the previous episode was at 442,000. So this is a significant decrease. And uh, quite honestly, I, I just have to put it out there. I have to talk about this. Collision and Rampage are meaningless. They're meaningless. Collision, the first five, six weeks under the toolage of CM Punk, they were pretty cool, man. Collision felt different. Uh, now I'm watching Collision, and it, it, if you miss an episode, it's not that big of a deal. That's how it feels. There, there's really nothing on there that it, that screams importance. Um, I don't feel like Collision has a, a focus on it. I don't think Rampage has a focus on it. And I get it from the perspective of business. It's probably good for AEW to have the extra content. But the the problem is Collision at one point felt like a can't miss show and now it's gotten to the point where collision is definitely a missable show and i think for that reason aew's got to figure it out man there is high demand for raw but there's also high demand for smackdown i can't see why aew is not taking that same approach i i, I don't get it and, and to see that the numbers are dropping drastically there is obviously a huge disconnect between the product and the fans. Dynamite, on the other hand, I feel like has been really good, but we also have to admit Dynamite's numbers have gone downhill. And, you know, at one point, Chris Jericho was talking about them beating WWE Raw. And instead of AEW building momentum towards that, it's actually been the opposite. So definitely some concern there. We'll see if AEW makes any changes. We are getting ready for that new TV deal. How do things change for AEW moving forward? Well, we'll find out.